Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I want to show you a way to enhance the native line chart visualization by giving you the ability to add KPI indicators for either high, low, first, or last values. Now, this is a feature that mirrors somewhat what you can find on many sparkling visuals. I've also added a feature where you can control which of these shows, if any, using a disconnected slicer. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So the visual that we have in front of us here is just the native area chart visual. We can also use the line chart as well. However, I just like the field color to be brought in a little bit again, because I'm trying to make this look somewhat like the spark lines that you can have as a custom visual, but instead using the native charts that are built into Power BI. And I also have a slicer here at the top that lets me either show both, meaning the high, the low, first and last, or just first and last only, which then makes the highs and lows disappear. And if I select high and low, then the first and last also disappears. Or if I clear the slicer, none of them show on this visual. I'm going to turn both of them back on and then show you how I created this. So if I select the chart in here, notice that I have a few different things in the values well. I have the actual units themselves, which is the line, and then I have first, last, high, and low. And each of these has its own DAX measure over here. Now I will say this actually shares somewhat of the same logic as far as the measures go from a previous video that I did that actually showed us how to create high and low KPI bands for a line chart as well. So if you're curious about how I did that other video that's somewhat related to this, I'll also have a link to that over on the right and down in the description. But essentially what I did with each of these is I created a calculation that grabs just a single value and places it on the chart. So the unit min is represented by the unit min that's over on the chart, same with the unit max. The first and the last are each separate calculations appearing on that chart itself. Now, if I select unit first, you can see that there's a few variables in here that is creating this calculation. So let me go ahead and zoom in and we'll discuss each one of these one at a time. So the selection up here is just connected to a disconnected table that I created with three rows, one that says high, low, first, last, or both. Then I have a measure that harvests whatever value is coming out of there using the selected value function. So that is all that is indicated here. So I will walk through each of these one at a time. So the first month and year, that's simply looking at the chart below on the axis and determining whatever the actual first month year value is. In this case, January 2017. So that is what's being returned in here. And I'm actually using a column on the calendar table called dates with sales flag. There's actually a SQL BI article that talks about this that I'll also link you to in the description, but that really just lets me determine the earliest or first date whenever there was sales data, which allows me to pin that to here. And the unit first and unit last is identical other than it's either first date or last date. So that really just looks for the earliest date period because I only wanted to show a data label just for that first date. And then the actual unit first is the actual value itself calculating the units, which is the measure that is being returned for the actual normal line chart. And it's just filtering for the month and year for any of the periods equals that first month. So that's how it's showing only for that first period. And then the result is an if statement where there is an or function in here to check to see if the selection, which is the KPS selection coming from the slicer, if it equals first and last or both, then it actually returns the value. Otherwise it returns blank, which is how when you clear the slicer, it disappears, or if I select high and low, the first and last does not show because that's not part of that selection. If I go back to here again and show you that. So this really is just doing a condition check to basically grab the slice of selection. Instead of always showing it, it will show it only if first and last or both is selected. And as I mentioned, the unit last is identical other than it is looking for the last month and year instead of the first. And then unit max does something very similar. It looks for whatever the value max selection is. So it calculates for this entire axis selection for any of these periods, what is the largest value? And then again, the unit max, it's calculating only where the month and year is matching to the unit max for any specific month and year, which is how, which is how this max measure here is only returning it for this single period, where that is the max from this visual and the min from this visual. And again, the result right here is checking to see either if it equals high or low, as in this case right there, or both, then it returns those two values in here. Otherwise, if it's first and last or cleared, it won't return those. Go ahead and turn this back on to both. And the nice part is, if I select this visual again, because each of these are a different distinct measure, I actually have the option to go into the formatter, because you'll notice that the icons and the colors are all different. I use a diamond for first and last, and then a circle and different colors for high and low. So not only do I get the data label, I get a different icon and color and I can adjust any of the sizes or shapes as much as I want to. If I come into shapes down here, 
then scroll down, I have an option to customize series, and then I can choose for my first, I can choose how big the stroke width is, I can choose the, uh, the marker, and in that case, I actually have an option to choose from any of these different markers. If I change it to an X, notice that that is now changed to an X, and I can do the marker size and the color and anything I want to on this chart. So it gives me a lot of flexibility to be able to customize the shape, size, and color of these, which is one thing that I really like about these indicators using this method is that it gives me an ability to do that. Now, there is a limitation for the fact that you do require a dedicated measure for each one of these to work, because if I did first and last in the same calculation, there would be a line between the two of them because that's how a line chart works. So they need to be independent. One single calculation being returned per measure that's in here. So if you have something where you want to return a category of them, multiple types of calculations, this really doesn't work. But as long as you have pairs, first, last, high or low, those are the types of things that can work as far as these indicators on the visual. But as you can see, this doesn't require too much setup. You just require a couple of dedicated measures, but then you're given a lot of flexibility in formatting and design on how they are looked and placed onto the page itself with the data labels, the colors, and the shapes. And it's something that gives you somewhat of a Sparkline feature package that comes with a native visual rather than needing to use a custom visual from the store. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.